You just said, would you want to own equities? I mean, there's also the question of what you think is going on in the United States with our economy, with the rest of the world, with what the Federal Reserve is or isn't going to do. It's a, it's a, it's a really challenging time to want to be an equity investor in U.S. stocks right now. It's really hard because, again, you've got uh, the geopolitical uncertainty, which we, I think, come to live with to a certain extent. But again, all those have the ability to, uh, to have a nonlinear outcome. So something not just uh, business as usual. But I think it's, I think equally as much of a problem is the fiscal situation that we're facing in the United States, which is gonna, which is gonna require a completely different political mentality that, to what that's got pretty, us here. That's pretty telling. So we're, you know, the possibility of a real possibility of a nuclear war is, right. is there, but our fiscal situation is just as bad. That's, I mean, that, that's a statement. So, so black swans, Paul, are no, they're not black swans anymore. They're, they're actual quantifiable risks. We need a new word for black swans. There's like four or five of them that used to be, you didn't even have to really, if, if it happened, we're all gone anyway, so you don't worry about it. But now they're actually something that are on your radar. Well, yeah. so is a pandemic, which was on your radar in, in Davos before anyone knew the word. I, I would say the fiscal situation is very different from other cataclysmic events that we've suffered as a country. It's not Pearl Harbor. It's not 9-11. It's not COVID, where we did not see them coming. They were external shocks. The fiscal situation we have is one that's really clear, uh, and there are obvious remedies for it, and it's something that we're going to have to deal with. It's not part of the political dialogue yet, really. You're I don't think so. You're talking entitlements again. It, it, well, it's a variety of things. But so mostly. If, if you just think about what's happened in, since really in the last three or four months, we're getting ready. I don't know if we'll have a Minsky moment in the bond market. I don't know if we'll have that point of recognition, but we're going to have the grinding reality that with 122 percent of debt to GDP, as interest costs go up the United States, you get in this vicious circle where higher interest rates cause higher funding costs, cause higher debt issuance, which cause further bond liquidation, which cause higher rates, which put us in an untenable fiscal position. We our interest bill is going to very shortly exceed our defense spending in just a couple of years. Uh, our, it's probably in four or five years, Ceteris Paribus will have the highest interest bill as a percentage of GDP that we've ever had. It'll probably be close to 20 percent of your taxes will go to pay interest right. on the debt unless we do something. So um, that has to be part of the dialogue has to be the main dialogue for next year's presidential right. election. And right now, the, 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 the real problem is the two guys that put us in this situation, and I think that's what the bond markets kind of recognize as we get closer to primaries, are the, are, are the ones that are our choices for president. And, and can you imagine Donald Trump or Joe Biden they're, they're the ones that start this. It actually started with Trump, right? Trump in 2016 was going to come in and he was going to cut taxes and cut spending. Well, along the way, cutting taxes was a great idea, but he didn't cut spending. So he, he inherited a 2.6% budget deficit. In 2019, it was 4.8% before the pandemic, so it almost doubled. And then in 2020, it went to 14% with the pandemic. But he's the one who, with a strong economy, said, I'm going to double down and cut taxes. We're going to grow our way out of it. Joe Biden, when he got elected, said, ah, the sugar high is pretty good. You had two or three Oreos. I'm going to eat the entire, the entire package. Uh, and the Build Back, Build Back Better Act was really the Build Back Debtor Act. So between the two of them, we kind of added 20 percent of debt to GDP, neither one of them, the people that created the problem, as Einstein said, are not the ones to fix it. He's, neither one of them can be president. It's really, it's that simple. Is there a candidate that you like 
And is also there a candidate that you think has a chance, given the numbers that we see today? Well, it's going to be really interesting. No labels will probably uh, nominate Joe, Joe Manchin. We, as a country, you know, freedom's not free, right? That's, that's the old saying. We, we, we love to laud our troops who put their, their bodies and souls in the line for, for this great country. It's clearly, we're going to have to have fiscal retrenchment. We're going to have to sacrifice. We're going to have to cut spending. We're going to have to deal with entitlements. We're going to have to change Social Security. We're going to have to limit Medicare and Medicaid. We're going to have to raise taxes on the very wealthy. We're going to have to unequivocally raise taxes. The United States right now has the fifth lowest tax take out of 40 OECD countries. So there's plenty of room for us to raise taxes. Would you have shut down the government? Were, were you with those guys that said we need to, you know, we need to take drastic measures? They, they, they say the same thing about the $33 trillion yeah. and we're never going to get anywhere. Yeah, the, the problem with them yeah. is that they only look at one side of the equation, which is that we have to cut spending. They are unwilling to talk about the other side of the equation, which is we're going to have to raise taxes. You cannot do this simply by cutting spending. We have Right now, here's what the bond market is telling you. Last year, or this year rather, we had $2.3 trillion of funding that the private sector is required to uh, find the funding for. So that has caused a 100 basis point spike in bond yields. In 2024, it's going to be $2.7 trillion in the U.S., $2.7 trillion, almost 10% of our budget is going to have to be to fund our federal, our federal spending. So the, it doesn't matter what the Federal Reserve says at this point. They've lost control. This is going to be the bond yeah. market talking and setting. Yeah, the bond market. So what's happening is, and why we're probably getting, we're probably going to go into recession sometime uh, in the first quarter of next year, probably because the bond market, simply through supply and demand, is going to deliver more rate hikes because we don't have a clearing price yet for right. long-term debt. And so those rate hikes are probably going to tip us into recession. Sure.